Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back to France. Go through this sort of beginner playthrough here. And right now, one of the things that we've kind of waiting for is we have a truce right now with England, which it also does tell us up here that the truce will expire May 1466. So that is still six years away. That's actually really a long time away. It looks like we uh, last had our our units drilling here, which basically one of the expansion features here. They're getting their army drill up. Actually, they're at 41% out of 100, giving them bonuses to their all their different things, and it's also helping the leaders get a bit stronger too. That's actually kind of good. We could just crank it to speed 5 and just you know, let them drill out for a bit. We're also getting our manpower back too. Um, it's been a couple days since the played, so I'm not sure what we're doing. It looks like our forts are red here. So that's just telling us that we've mothballed the fort, so we don't have anyone garrisoning the forts. And we're making a bit more money. We can actually take a look and see. Okay, we're making 10, 10 ducats a month. Fort defense 20%. This advisor could be, like, we could replace this advisor. That's not very strong. We could buy a level 2 advisor. They're quite a bit more expensive than the level 1s. The level 1 advisors are basically a buck a month. This would be four ducats a month, so it's uh, it's quite a steep increase. Quite a steep increase. 10% morale. We might consider doing something like that when we actually go to war. Okay, I'm just noticing right here, um, yearly inflation reduction. This is a pretty good guy, if you have inflation, because it's kind of annoying getting rid of inflation. Inflation, you're going to get that... Uh, primarily for when you get large sums of money, like from a war, and you take in a bunch of money, it's gonna it's gonna add to the inflation. Um, and we do actually have 1.2% inflation, which I believe this cost literally. It just makes everything cost more. It, it's it's not like 1.2% doesn't seem like much, but um, I mean when everything costs that, and we're playing a 400 year campaign, it. It ends up being a pretty big deal. Although we're making money right now from this guy. He's sort of paying for himself, so I don't think we have to switch right now. Let's just look at It's been a couple days since we played, so let's just look at our banners here. Um, it's saying that we can select an idea group. So we were kind of talking about this. This is basically something we unlocked with technology. We unlocked our first idea group, so we go to the idea tab here. We got some unique French ones that we'll be getting as we chug into the... Um, the non-country specific ones. So we can we can embrace sort of a philosophical idea or, or try to like specialize our nation by going down one of these idea paths. We have to pick one of these. And it would be cool to do the colonization stuff. That'd actually be really, really cool. And that would require us going into exploration. The tricky thing is I'm noticing, and these cost uh, monarch power, right? So diplomatic power would, would pay for the diplomatic ideas, administrative power for the administrative ideas, military power for the military ideas. So here's the tricky thing. If we want to go diplo or admin, we look at our power up here. We have a lot more military power. Right now, with the way everything's gone, we've actually just built up a lot of military power. Maybe that's because our leader is more military skilled. Actually, I think we nationally focus this. So we do want to actually click this off. Looks like uh, it's saying this can be changed June 6th, 1465. So we can actually adjust this and, and go for one of these other two points. In fact, if we picked an idea group that was diplomatic, we would definitely want to focus, nationally focus for, for diplomacy um, skill. Our leader is actually getting kind of old. I mean, this does increase. The older they get, the more likely that they could just uh, pass. actually saying that uh oh no it's just saying that we have a royal marriage with castile it's not saying that they're gonna like take us over or anything like that nothing to worry about there but if we're looking here one of the things is we have 900 military points and one of the things i so i'm kind of going back and forth here but our technologies we can look at our technologies and see okay how are we doing here we're actually as we can see here we're at five administrative technology four diplomatic Five military, so we're behind on diplomatic technology. We're actually behind on diplomatic technology. In fact, it's even saying this negative five percent right here is coming from a neighbor bonus. So one of our neighbors actually already has this technology, and we don't have it yet. 
So we're getting a, a, a because you know literally we can see people across the way that have this technology. We're getting a bit of a a cost reduction to embrace this technology, so to speak. But we don't have it right now, so we're kind of in the hole, so to speak, on uh, diplomatic power. We're a bit in the hole there. Um, but we have a so going diplomatic idea right now might not be the best move because I feel like we're actually a little behind on our diplomatic power, and partly because we're we're making the least amount of diplomatic power uh, because of our leader skill. Our leader has low diplomatic skill. Our next our heir though is a little bit more proficient with the uh, with the diplomacy there. So it could be that for our first one, we could go military idea. And this would give us a couple nice little benefits because we're already like ahead of time. What's called ahead of time on our military technology. It's even though we have a lot of military power, we actually can't upgrade our military technology because it's saying we're six years ahead of time. So we're getting a 60% penalty on our technology. So it's going to say that it would literally cost us a thousand power, a thousand military power to, to get this. That's not worth it because it just means we're going to be ahead for the next one. And then eventually this, this modifier would get so high we would never be able to afford the technology until we let everyone else catch up anyways. So it's kind of this weird balance like you want to be up to date but you can't really get too far ahead of everybody else. Um, so getting a military idea group is definitely what we could do. Like this military power doesn't have as much value to us right now because we just don't have anything to do. Well, there's things we can do with it, but we haven't talked too much about the other things. So it's kind of like, you know, we could get quality ideas. This is basically, you know, we can see all this good stuff here. It's making infantry combat ability is increased. Cavalry combat ability is increased. So it just makes this is improving the uh, the combat effectiveness of our units, which is good. Quantity is pretty much what it sounds like. It's just it allows us um, to build larger armies, sustain larger armies, um, reduces the cost of, of building troops, reduces the land maintenance so you can support more troops, increases the manpower modifier up here, so gets us a lot more manpower, which again is good for reinforcing our our existing uh, divisions. So quantity is always a really good. A class, but the thing is we're already a big nation we're already going to be able to build a lot of troops i don't know if we're going to need to build more than we already can offensive ideas i kind of like these two again they just they give us things that are very good for sieging down enemy territory really well and and some di discipline bonuses and make our leaders stronger so these basically uh you know land leader shock plus one so when we roll leaders they get extra pips so they get a get more skill in the different types of uh, combat. That stuff is pretty good. I mean, they're all good. That's the thing. I mean, this is naval ideas. I don't know if this would allow us to challenge Great Britain anymore, but the truth is we're in a good position with Great Britain. We can take back this land that'll make us stronger and make them weaker. We have this foothold on proper England, so I don't know if we need naval ideas specifically. Aristocratic ideas... Reduces military uh, technology costs. That's pretty good. Monthly autonomy change. That's kind of good. More national manpower. Wow, aristocratic ideas is looking like a nice blend of things. An extra diplomat, an extra leader without upkeep. I don't know why we need the extra diplomat, but... Right. Available mercenaries. I, you know, I think we actually probably will be... Leader siege... Plus one leader siege. Plus one leader siege. That's really good. This is actually looking kind of good to me. I don't usually go aristocratic ideas, but it's looking kind of good to me right now, to be honest. Wow, and if we pair this with the administrative ideas... So these... I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but basically when you complete this entire... Um, category you get uh, you unlock policies if you've complete like that, that sort of we'll, we'll check that out later but basically if we complete uh, groupings from over here, like in the other categories there's a synergy between how these ideas work with the other ideas from the other categories but there's a policy that you can enact based on having two um, idea groups completed that are in different categories 
And I'm just noticing here, like if we if we got a different one, to, there's some good policies in this list. I mean, again, they're all good. This is actually kind of looking kind of nice. This is looking kind of nice. We could even get that military tech cost reduction. I don't know. I'm kind of digging this uh, I, this aristocrat. I've never gone aristocrat. I don't think I've really ever gone aristocratic before, but this is looking like there's some good stuff here. We're going to get the extra manpower, which is nice. Kind of like, you know, a bit of sort of a taste of quality, a uh, quantity. Reading the uh, increased cavalry combat efficiency, which is sort of a taste of uh, quality there. Saving power. Uh, extra mercenaries, because I think that's going to be good. Yeah, I'm thinking... The other thing is we could look at uh, just going another category. But again, we're kind of... Eh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We could just wait, too. We could just wait. I know I'm kind of like tugging people around here. So, but basically, I was thinking, though, because we're in a six-year truce right now with England, so we can't attack England. We can kind of just do... The, let's do a tour, right? Like, this is what we're thinking. What else can we do? Let's do a tour of the nations around us. We do have claims, right? Because we've created claims with our spy network on Aragon. So we do have reasons to go to war with Aragon. It looks like Castile would join. Castile would join. That means that they probably... But Papal State will not. Because they're actually... The, here's the annoying thing about Aragon is they're allied with the Papal State. Which might change because the Papal State... There's probably a lot of border friction. Um between Aragon and the Papal State, I imagine. But regardless, we would lose the alliance. We would lose the Papal State as an ally if we attack Aragon. And that would just be kind of... Uh, the truth is, it's probably going to happen at some point because they have land here that we probably want. Again, Papal State expanded their borders here by taking over part of Provence early on. If we go to Burgundy, though, we don't get... Castile doesn't want to join because they're saying it's a distant war. This would be way too bloody. Way too bloody. Now, one thing that we are doing, that we were doing from last campaign, is we're setting up a spy network in Brittany. Because if we attack Brittany... Now, we don't have a claim yet, so it's saying that there's going to be massive penalties here. Because we have no Casa Spelli. Uh, but Castile will join in on this. Heck, we could even bring Switzerland along. It would mean fighting Scotland which would break our uh, guarantee with them, which means England could attack into Scotland, which I don't think is a good thing. Unfortunately, I think we're just kind of pinched right now. And we could look at um, we could look at Savoy. Austria would defend. This would be a bloody battle. Aragon, Austria, Venice, Genoa. Oh, man. That would be... Uh, so basically, we could even hit here. That would be all the blue here. Savoy and then Austria as well. That would be a bloody battle. Yeah, you know, I think honestly, we're making some good money. We are going to... One thing that we can look at is let's prepare for the fight against England. But what are they dealing with? right? Or what are we dealing with right now in terms of their military strength? So we go back to the ledger, go to military. We're seeing, okay, we're at 44. So, oh, we can build some more troops. Okay, because we took provinces up here, right? We took the uh, Sussex and Wessex, basically. And... Um, and we can actually build some more troops now. So we're going to want to do that. England's at 35, but they only have a uh, max, but they only have 21,000 at the moment. They have lower manpower than us. They're kind of hurting. They're kind of hurting. Their allies are Portugal. Portugal. So I'm hoping that we're going to be able to call in Castile in the war, and hopefully we'll be able to have them sort of take care of Portugal. We'll have to see. Let's build some more troops. Going to the build menu here. And we can see... Yeah. We actually have a lot of cavalry in this army. We just need more infantry. And it's saying 38 out of 40. So let's get let's get a couple more here. Looking on the province that we'd like them to be built in. The other thing we can consider is, again, we're making so much money. And it's going to be good to have a lot in the bank. Because this war, I think, is going to be a bit trickier. I actually think this war is going to be more difficult. Because one, it'll be... It'll be uh, England and their allies, which will be Portugal. And I believe England also has vassal nations now. They have three vassal nations here. So England is going to... There's going to be a lot more troops. It's not just going to be England. It's going to be England plus all of all of their allies. So we are going to want a lot of troops. Heck, we might even be going over the force limit. We might be building mercenaries. And we might be go, like taking out loans even. I don't know if it, if it comes to that. But either way, I think we do want to build we want to strengthen our navy 
But what do we have so far? We just have the 12 ships. Or 11 ships, sorry. Wait a second, where are our heavies? Did we lose our heavies in the war? Are you kidding me? Did we lose our heavies in the war? Or did I sell them? No way. Let's build some more heavies. They're expen They're very expensive, but let's get let's get like four heavies. We can go back to England here. I know we haven't even unpaused the game yet. We can go to England here. Navies. So Ottomans are actually growing, it looks like. But they have England has four heavy ships, so I think our goal is going to be to have four heavy ships. These ships take a while to build, though. Can I tell us here? It's literally going to take about two years for these to build. So let's just let us just let it fly. Let's just kind of kick it up to speed five and just kind of chill out for a bit. Our armies are training. Okay, good harvest, good harvest. Money would be nice, but, you know, again, administrative power is very, very valuable, and we don't have a lot of it right now, so... I think usually I'm going to take the power in that situation. So let's get these uh, provinces over here building. One thing we can do with our light ships, I don't think it'll make much of a difference, but we can protect trade. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Mm -hmm. But if we send them to Genoa to protect, protect trade, it's saying that we're going to make a, like a small profit. A small profit. If we take them to Bordeaux. Oh, we'll make more. So we'll make if we if we protect trade in Bordeaux, we increase the trade power here. We move more of this money to Champagne where we collect it. So it's telling us right here. It's just summarizing. It's just saying, hey, you know. The fleet is going to add this much trade power, which should give you this much more pull. And um, it's saying that you're going to make a little bit of profit. Do that, So you don't have to do the math yourself. We're just going to have our ships doing that, just so they're doing something. Of course, we're waiting here. I know the game is moving really, really fast right now, but everything is kind of chilling. We're kind of waiting for this. We're building this spy network up. Okay, so we've gotten to 20. But now we can sort of make a... Uh, make a claim on Brittany. We can claim any of the provinces that we either border or are adjacent to via sea tiles. And now that we have this province here, I think we can actually pretty much claim any of these. So I suspect if we open this up, yeah, we'll have the option of, of most all of these except for this one here. Huh. We need all of this land eventually. Uh, here, actually, hmm. Here's the tricky thing. There's a we have a we have a, a mission that's going to give us claims on this area, I believe. Because one of the missions we're working on is reconquer uh, Gascony. This gives oh sorry, it's actually going to be reconquer Normandy. But if we we gain a permanent claim on Brittany area, on what what it's calling Brittany area, which I'm assuming this is all of the Brittany area. So we will get a permanent claim on all of these pieces here. We don't necessarily need to claim them. We just need... That's why I think one of the reasons why we haven't gone to war with them is because we'll be able to get um, that, that opportunity to do that sort of on the cheap later on. Let's, uh, let's unpause here. Let's take a look and see, okay, how did this... What is this shaping out to be? We wouldn't want to call in Castile because we want to save them for England, I think. Why would... Papal state, we don't have enough favors with the papal state. I mean, Utrecht and Gallery, these are smaller nations. Literally, these are just one province nations over here. Actually, no, it looks like Utrecht has two provinces. Now, that's still going to be six, that's going to be 12 to 14,000 troops in total. They still have a lot of troops. A small nation has, I think, minimum is like 6,000 troops. I mean, you have a pretty good force limit as a one province nation. So two little nations like that are going to contribute, you know, twelve to 14,000 troops. That's nothing compared to us. And we can look and see, okay, what's going on with Brittany? What's going on with Brittany? I mean, they have 15,000, they have 14,000 troops with the potential to go up to 15,000. They have no... Oh, we're, oh, sorry, whoops, I'm looking at their uh, navy. I'm looking at their navy. 
Look at their armies. 11,000 potential, 8,000 total, but then they have manpower for, for more. It'd be a quick war. We could just grab it and be done with it. Just grab this and be done. Be nice and easy. So let's get these down here. Hmm. Yeah, there's their troops right there. We can see them with our ships. Sort of scouting that area for us as they protect trade. They have a fort. They have three forts, though. So there'd be no way for us to go in there and just ninja attack them. We'd have to... Uh, I don't know. Let's do it. Let's let's not let's make this a little bit more exciting. Let's let's use this as a good teaching war because the the British war is going to be quite a bit more complicated, I think. So we have lazy diplomats. What can we do with those? Well, we can get claims going on Burgundy by building a spy network, and then we can also butter up our allies. Castile loves us. Papal State loves us. And I'm assuming... Okay, Switzerland could use a little bit more love, so we'll send them over to Switzerland. And we don't really need to keep the uh, spy in Brittany, because we're about to go to war with them, I think. But what we need to do is we do need to stop drilling here. Because as you can see, the morale of our army right here is really low. Because we've been drilling, so it's been reducing their their morale. Let's go up here. Let's Let's turn on our forts for a little little war here. It shouldn't take us too long. Let's also slow the, slow the game down a bit, but we are waiting at least speed four. We're waiting for this morale to tick back up, and the other thing we need to notice is that our military power is getting very, very, very high. But what can we do with this? Well, there's a few options. One thing is we can strengthen our government, but this increases our legitimacy, and our legitimacy is already maxed. So we could spend 100 military to strengthen the government and increase legitimacy. Basically, you're brute forcing people into into like le like looking at you legitimately. I guess I don't know. You're just change. You're forcing their opinion to change of you. But we don't need to do that because we're already max um, max on that. We could roll more leaders, right? We have room for one more leader. That could be good to have another leader. That costs fifty military power. We're just going to click on this and just roll a roll a general here. Not great, but he has a siege point. He, like, fire is really important because fire early game is, is where a lot of the damage comes from. So this is not a good leader. We could, heck, we could just try again. But really, the only reason why we'd be trying this is if we don't want to do a military idea group. We could just hit the aristocratic ideas. But I'm kind of leaning towards, eh, there's some other stuff going on here. This here's something kind of cool. Administrative ideas... Gives us cheaper core creation. So we haven't even talked about why that's going to be good. And they also, like, it's it's very mercenary focused. So because France is a pretty economically strong country, we'll be able to leverage uh, mercenaries. Because, again, mercenaries sort of use your gold rather than use your manpower. So if you have a lot of money, it makes perfect sense to use mercenaries. Now, let's not complicate it. We looked at aristocratic ideas. We saw some good stuff there. Let's hit these buttons. So now that we've gotten the idea group, we have a bunch of military power. We're still coming up on cap. Cap is 1,000. I don't know if that was well explained. We're six years ahead on military technology, so we might as well just start pumping some of this power into some of these ideas. So we do have to pay for each of these ideas in order. So first we're going to get noble knights, increase the cavalry efficiency, and reduce the cavalry cost. And the second thing we could do is military traditions. We can hit this and we can lower the, uh, the amount of cost it's going to be to get the military technology by 10%. That's going to be permanent for the rest of the game. So that's actually going to save us. Like, this is going to pay for itself in a sense, right? So that's good. It's good. So the next, as you can see, we're sort of making progress towards our national ideas, the French ideas. It takes three idea group, ideas to be unlocked here to, to unlock one, uh, the first idea, French idea. So this one is just going to give us another diplomatic relation. Of course, right now we have four diplomatic relations and they're all being used. Why are they all being used? Alliance with the Papal State. Okay, that makes sense. 
alliance with Switzerland and an alliance with Castile, and then we're still guaranteeing uh, Scotland. Okay, that actually makes sense. So let's get our, our morale up for these troops here. Uh -oh. Okay, an event happened. We can gain a, an advisor. But what do we get here? Okay, we can gain some corruption and lose some money, but I believe this is telling us that we're going to get another cardinal. As long as we control this province. Yeah. So we can actually sort of... Um, we can take in a cardinal. Fifty percent chance. Okay, Burgundy could gain an insult. We don't care if Burgundy gets a, if we insult Burgundy. That, and we don't care about their opinion of us. We hate each other. I think yes, we want to steal the uh, cardinal, from um, Burgundy. I guess they're losing the cardinal anyways. The only thing unfortunate here is the ducats are not very many, but the corruption. We haven't talked about corruption, but that's this number here. And corruption is something that's going to go up with events, and there's other reasons why it can go up, like if your your technology is imbalanced, like if you're focusing on one technology rather than leveling them all up together, the corruption can go up. Corruption increases the power cost. It's kind of like inflation, but for power cost. So it's really, really nasty. Um, it increases the power cost. In this case, it's increasing all power costs by 0.5%. We only have half a point of corruption, though. And it increases maximum autonomy and a bunch of really bad stuff, actually. One of the things is the game should automatically be trying to root out corruption now. So it's recognizing that we have some corruption and it's going to adjust the slider so that it gets rooted out automatically for money. So you have to spend money to remove corruption. Spend money to remove corruption. Some of it's just going away because we're super like uh, positive stability and we're ahead of time in administrative tech. I guess that automatically roots out corruption, but we are spending some money have it go away as well okay we can check our morale here this green bar up here it looks like we are 30 uh 3.97 out of 3.97 and these guys are definitely full because they stopped drilling even before so these troops here the idea with these troops i believe i'm kind of torn here let's organize this better let's get like two different armies here so that we can do two different sieges at once these troops, though, the idea with this group over here is that they will be able to intercept uh, the units that come this way. Because, of course, Brittany is going to have allies coming from this direction here, from Gallery and Utrecht. So. so we're just sort of literally just preparing our... We're getting the best, our best siege leader, who is John Bro. We're going to have him go right for the capital. We're going to have this guy who also has a point in siege, I believe. Yeah, one point in siege. Jean whatever. Are these guys both named Jean? Or Jean? Whatever. So he's going to go right here for here and start sieging this. Because we've already checked. They have... These are forts. Interesting thing is, I'm not sure if this is max... Yeah, this isn't max... Uh, max fortified. They're, they're trying to re-garrison it as we speak. So let's declare the war. So we have a Casas Belly, and that's to conquer this province here. So we have a we have a reason to go to war. So we're not going to get any native modifiers here for going to war with Brittany because we have a just reason to do it. We had to build that with the spy network, and you can get those from you know you can get a claim for from missions or from events and things like that. So in this case, it's uh, going to war with Scotland. We said that this was going to be unfortunate. It is. Scotland's probably going to come down here and siege this land here, but whatever. It, it's fine. Scotland, you'll just... I don't know. Scotland, good luck to you, man. <laughs> I really didn't want to do this, but let's let's do something. I don't want to wait for five years and not do anything. Let's use the time. Because there's a concept, once we get done with this war, it'll be something that I can kind of show you guys that will kind of make it all... I'm tempted to call in Switzerland. Because one, they're a small nation, remember? We uh they we gain favors from them. Like like they owe us favors because they're a small nation. In fact, they already owe us 16 favors. That's fast. 
But if we look at Castile... Okay, weird. They're both at 16. Yeah, I'm not sure why. We should be earning favors quicker with, with uh, Switzerland. And Switzerland honestly isn't going to do that much for us against England. So let's just call them in now. Let's just make this as smooth as humanly possible because they're gonna, that, those 8,000 troops will help sort of uh, minimize the effect of, of these other nations. And if Scotland somehow gets down here, it's going to be nice just to have those extra troops kind of walking around. No, we do not want to... We had a Castile selected. We do not want to call in Castile. So let's call in Switzerland. That's what this is telling us. You can call in allies. Well, we decided that we didn't want to call in allies, and then we changed our mind. This is just saying we can build churches. And Okay, so we've unlocked the ability to build churches. We could look at that. Have we already looked at that? Oh. I don't think we've looked at that, but... Okay, so let's just leave these up here for a while. We could become the Defender of the Faith. Um, that's pretty expensive. We've talked about that in the past, I believe. Let's not worry about too much of these. These are all green, not high priority. We already know the disputed claim one. Not worried about that one whatsoever. Let's see if we can do this war nice and easy, nice and quick. So we do have our fleet here, which is not much. They have nine light ships. Nine light ships. That's a lot stronger than what we have right here. Nine light ships and five transports. We only have three and eight. So we need these heavies. If we're going to do anything, we need the heavies to get built. Burgundy just did something and we weren't paying attention. Okay, this is kind of funny. Utrecht is... Um, it's coming across here to see. Like, these aren't forts. These, these have no value. So we're okay here. We're okay. This is basically a big standstill. Um... Utrecht has decided to siege down... In fact, they're all sieging down these areas over here. Kind of a waste of time. Kind of a waste of time. Here's the question. Can we march? We can actually march. Yeah, let's not. So what happened there is Switzerland actually just grouped with us because we have this thing on allow friendly armies to attach. We tried this with Castile, but they didn't listen to us. Here, Switzerland is listening to us. They recognize, hey, we're the big player here. They're going to attach to us. The thing is, I think we want Switzerland just kind of doing their own thing. We don't. We want to come up here and just sort of, I don't know, if we can get these nations. Oh, okay, huge miscalculation. We did not read Gallery properly. Gallery is actually stronger than we thought. And we have this... Um, Okay, so we have this thing saying that rebels are going to be appearing, a regiment of rebels or peasants uprising in Valoris. Uh, Valori. Oh, that's right next to us. So let's actually keep the attachment. Keep the attachment, move over here, and we'll just take care of this. I'm assuming we don't want to do the... Oh, if we do the opposite, we actually can get plus two morale of armies. That actually, I think we're going to do that because that's going to help us in this war. How long does that last? For 10 years, we can get plus 10% morale of armies. The only thing is we're going to have to lose a little bit of noble nobility influence. So we are getting a manpower recovery rate. That's really good. And now they're going to be upset. Now they're going to be upset. But again, this is going to tick up to 50%. So now it's going in the right direction. So it's going to slowly go back. And once it's at 40%, then they won't be upset with us. And then it'll continue to raise up to 50. So we're doing okay here. I'm not sure what the play is here because what we didn't notice is that Gallery is quite a bit more powerful than we thought. We thought Gallery was just this starting uh, province here where they start. They actually have somehow taken uh, these provinces here, which is weird to me because they're not even connected. How did they do that? Yeah, I don't know my geography. Apparently Gallery starts with... Well, this is Cleve. There's no way Gallery is... They have a claim on it, but they don't have a... Uh, or Maybe Gallery starts like this, I, and I didn't know they started separate like that. I didn't know, but they've taken the, a piece from, from Cologne. Or Colm. So, and apparently they don't even exist anymore. And nothing we can do about that. It's not not a choice. It's just it's just warning us that the clergy influence has gone up, which gives us a lot of tax, but it kind of gives them they're a little bit too influential right now, actually. 
what we need is we need these sieges to break down here. Because once these sieges break, then we can we can push to finish Brittany. And from there, we're going to be able to basically dictate the terms of the war. There we go. There's the one that we needed there. Ooh, interesting. So we actually have military access through Great Britain. We need to keep an eye on these units here and see when they start moving and grooving. Okay. Okay. So Brittany's getting trapped here. And all of their allies are over here because, well, the AI doesn't always do the most intelligent stuff. So let's click on this. So we see that they're moving. They're locked into move here, into this position. Let's take a look and see what our battle is going to look like. So it's going to be in the grasslands or the farmlands. So this literally has no effect on combat, which means the defenders will not get a bonus. The attackers will not get a bonus. We can actually look at another stat to see what is our combat width. 22. So if we send more than 22 troops into here, then some of the troops won't be able to engage. So let's actually, what we could do is we really, again, this is part of the optimization. We could send in exactly 22 troops to make sure that everyone's attacking, that the cavalry are doing full flanks. Because the cavalry can only attack from the sides. In fact, I'm not even 100% sure if uh, four cavalry are, like can even attack can all be attacking at the same time in this situation, but we'll see. So it's going to be 8 versus 22. We could look at their general here. They have a 3, 6, 1. So, so basically, this is... Yeah, that's that's pretty big. They have uh, a 3, 6 general. We have a 4, 4, which is pretty good too, but not great. Now, we could also check... One more thing we could check here is river crossings. So there's a river crossing that flows between this province, uh, Amor, and so there's going to be a river crossing here. So I'm wondering, are we going to get the penalty for that? We shouldn't if if they arrive first. Actually, not arriving first. Let's let's wait two days. Let's turn the speed down. Just let let it take two days. Now we move in. Now they should be arriving one day later. Yeah. Okay. Now we should get them here. Nice easy fight here. We can move these troops up to engage the 2,000 stack here that for whatever reason is is, se is separated. Yeah, the 2,000 are instantly dead. They instantly died. We won that battle, and look at this. We can see they're retreating. They're injured. They're retreating to here. We can actually cut them off and engage them here. Let's make sure we have a leader, though. We do have a leader. That's right. He's just not a very good one. And because they had nowhere else to go and they had no morale... When the fight started, they instantly died. So all... Uh-oh. This red means that our spy was detected. Okay, we don't really want the nobility to lose in loyalty at this point because they're already really low. They're already really low. But we don't want to lose... Oh, we don't really want to lose legitimacy or administrative power. This is a bad this is just a bad choice. People are upset for some reason. So again, legitimacy. Again, legitimacy does trend upwards. So we could just take the legitimacy hit. But that means that the nobility are gonna be extra, extra, extra upset with us. And we could try to see is there a way that we can boost their loyalty? No, it doesn't look like it not right now. It's all on cooldown. Here's the funny part. We could actually just demand stuff from the uh, from the the guilds, basically. If we go here, yeah, I think we're just gonna. Unfortunately, we're just gonna make the um, the nobility really really dislike us. That's unfortunate, but that's it, it's the way of it. It'll trend upwards. It'll trend back upwards. Here, though, we could actually like think about hitting one of these buttons over here. We could just ask for a contribution. Get some money from them. No strings attached. They just lose a little bit of loyalty. We'll wait a bit. We'll wait a bit. Because they're not quite in the sweet spot where that's going to be not, not a big deal. We could get our siege leader. What we probably want to do here is get our siege guy in here working on this fort and then back out with the other troops. Oh, 
And we actually have Galleria's landing troops, slowly but surely. They don't have many ships, right? They can't get their ship, uh, can't get their troops across very easily. All right, so for the most part, we're looking at this war here. We've sieged down Brittany. They're pretty much taken care of. They really don't even have any troops left. We're kind of just rotating back around because we're going to have to put pressure on these nations here to get out of the war. Because we just want, we just don't want them in the war. We have a 28% war goal so far, or war score, because we've taken the war goal. So it's ticking upwards for us, right? Current war score is uh, at 2. We've earned 2 out of 25. We can get 25% just for taking the war goal. We've taken Anju or whatever, and we will be uh, good on that. So we're winning the war. There's no way that we can really lose the war. In fact, it even gives us an estimation of the amount of the troop count. Brittany, of course, has no troops. Scotland actually has the most troops. And Scotland's, I think, is the least likely to come down here. So we're doing really well, but we are going to take a pause in the episode here, I think. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, I will see you guys on the next one, where we will finish this war and we will prepare for England. After this, it's going to be full-on assault on England. That'll be a good battle. We'll get back our French lands.